Oh, yeah, hey, he's oh, 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 fuck off, you. I think it uh, took us an hour to get the fucking set working I today. What happened? Yeah. Dave, oh, Dave. No, nah, it's just software yeah. issue. It glitches sometimes yeah, when we're roping you in. You know, we've got a we're Ooh. running and rope two ropes. versions of external microphones off one system, and it, it fucking flips out sometimes. Boring. Boring. Hey, Jesus uh, Christ. Gonna, Boring. Yeah, well, you're gonna need to come up a little bit on uh, yeah. on Dan <laughs> here. Is this a recode low. conference? Yeah. Like, Jesus, no one wants to hear that, Jared. Hey, you uh, know what we do want to hear? We want to hear an epic rant. Hey. Yeah, Evan. Evan's all pissed off this morning, Ross. What happened? Well, I think a lot of things happen. You know, I just kind of like I like to sit on my toilet every now and again in the mornings, <laughs> and then get on Twitter and just, and just get mad. Yeah, because that, that's like my new thing. You <laughs> know, Angry I'm shits. like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm new to Twitter. You know, I'm a, I'm a newbie. Yeah, twi- I've been on there. Twooby. I've been on there Tubi. tweeting away. You know, yeah. this morning I was reading kind of the back and forth between the the. The, you know Fox and CNN and this this whole narrative around the election you know mm, yeah mm. and I was like Bernie announces his his candidacy for like, oh my god he's gonna die so before the, he even gets we're, there yeah. we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna we're, we're gonna feel the burn yeah again. of course we're gonna feel the burn <laughs> like, no, 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 no. That's the kind of burn you can live without, right? It's yeah. like mm-hmm. it's kind of like the burn that comes out of your urethra Herpes. when you've made a few mistakes. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's like chlamydia, you know? where yeah. you can cure it because it's really old and gonna go away, but but it burns. It burns, and then you know I'm <laughs> I'm I'm reading things about how Amazon is pushed out of uh, what is that Brooklyn? Is that yeah? Where they're no, it's out? Queens, Queens, Queens. Yeah. Yeah, it's three billion dollar facility, twenty five thousand jobs with an average salary of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year for people of Queens. And what did their beloved AOC do? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't well, say she... beloved because only six thousand people voted. <laughs> so... <laughs> hey, but she she has three million followers on Twitter. Oh my god! I, so this, I don't know anything about this. So please, it keeps please growing explain. by the day, Evan. Like her her popularity yeah, because people want to watch the fucking destruction. Yeah. Is what it is, like, and it is. It, it it is. It's like I I got on there this morning, and I I, I you know of course you can only rant in 120 characters or whatever it is. No, you can't really get it. Out I think it's two forty really now. It it's two forty. Is it two forty? Yeah, they okay. upped it a while oh. back. So still, it's still not enough. I, and I posted this link to a KGB, uh, a former KGB KGB officer that had uh, fled the Soviet Union back in the 80s. They did a newscast on just, hey, let's talk to a KGB guy. And for an hour, it's on YouTube. uh, We can post a link to it. For an hour, he describes the Soviets' method of of propagating information and propaganda and how they're actively and have been for, I mean, literally, and it's not just this KGB guy. but Hundred year war. No, it's, it's... it's right after the Bolshevik Revolution because the other thing was is that America and a lot of people don't understand this, but we we had supported building bases uh, in the Soviet Union, which at that time was Russia, right? Uh, and that was uh, on the side of the Czar. So the Soviets have never since the Bolshevik Revolution they've never seen America as their friend. They've never seen the Western countries as their friend, and they're master information manipulator propaganda artist that's like what they are fucking good at and you know what they're probably tired of being cold oh america's climate yeah. looks awesome it looks to them. Awesome. they're like yo we yeah. need that they're california like, weather like, motherfucker hey, check it out in, they're pretty much the same size but they got way better weather they're kind of like a really good marketing firm with a really shitty product with a really <laughs> shitty product that's what yeah. they are yeah they're they're so so I'm, I'm i'm thinking about history at the same time i'm taking a shit I'm thinking <laughs> Stalin must be just fucking laughing. laughing, like belly laughing right now at the United States and how easy they are to manipulate and how effective a hundred year war essentially when I'm I'm rounding up, right? But I mean Bolshevik Revolution was what, Dan? What year? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember the year, but it was yeah. in the early twentieth century. Sure. It's been a hundred years. Yeah, it's been a hundred years. So they are laughing right now at how they're campaign that they literally instituted and launched at the beginning of we'll call it 
the what 20th century age, 1994 right? ish probably right. is when they were like hey we could use yeah. this against like, them. hey you know what so we're we're gonna go to work on the western countries and the, the thing that i know about this because of you know the, the previous employment that we were that we were in and talking to guys that had been institutional cia officers the cold war was fought on the information front mm-hmm. the <clears throat> russians weren't the greatest at winning wars, as we've seen mm-hmm. in Afghanistan, but they are fucking great at information operations. Like, oh, yeah. you just kind of put more money into the things that you're great at, and they're in this for generations. So yeah. they launch this information war. They target the Western academic institutions, the pillar of education and academia in the United States, and there's a great little little side note because then they run catch a into. bunch of them. They did in yeah. Cambridge because yeah. they recruited them in college in Oxford. <laughs> They rolled them up when they were already in MI5. <laughs> and the Soviets had come out and were like, yeah, dude, hey, man, this this is hey. what it is. This is intel, guys. I don't know. Welcome to the fucking party. Yeah, <laughs> and, hey, yeah we're putting teachers in your colleges. Yeah. We're going to start fucking yeah. with all of you. So once we roll Cambridge, yeah. we're going to roll Harvard. We're going to roll Stanford. We're going to roll Yale. We're going to roll start all of your Western pillars of academia. seeds. <laughs> We're going to start exactly. I'm going to plant the seeds because this is like this is uh, this is pure like hubris academic uh, candy for these fucking morons (laughs) that love to read and go, oh, my God, this theory will work. We're all equal. You know, guys, like it's going to work. It's the difference between an economist and a scientist. Exactly. Like (laughs) you have for for a scientist to say something's a theory means that they've tested it and it has never been proved disproven and that's the get out of jail, jail free card for socialism well it's never been implemented properly get the fuck get the out fuck of here out of that here. bullshit they've tried they have failed miserably it goes against every ounce of human instinct in well, that's, to, that's the problem though they don't take the that into account like they think that socialism can be a closed system irrespective of all humanity but yeah. that's not the case humanity exists and if socialism touches humanity, then fucking assholes, we're going to... Uh, there's no utopia. There's no... Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. The, and this, this idea, as I'm thinking about this, and I write this on Twitter this morning, I'm like, man, Stalin must be fucking laughing his ass off at how easy it I was. Mean, yeah, now, Gretchen, it was poor timing. In the right? last two poor years, timing. they have a landslide. Like they, they We have, have jumped right into their hoop. And now we're just hanging out but, inside the hoop. But they were they were on time on target, by the way, guys, because they really this thought, time. they yeah, they really thought the Soviet Union, which honest to God, this is just Soviet Union light. I mean, Putin's just trying to to reinvigorate <laughs> Soviet Union it is. light. It it is. Is. Yeah. That's what it is. Hey, no sugar, but we got aspartame. It's, in a, this it's, bitch. it's <laughs> a it's a perfect blend. No, that makes sense. Of where you would say socialism but really we're just going to isolate it to the oligarchs and then there you go this is like we're just going to isolate all the wealth I mean, and power we're going to control yeah. everything and distribute things to the people that we like take away things that we don't ah, at the end of the day we got all the power years we want. yeah another 20 years of demasculizing the entire american populace weakening the military by creating risk adverse leaders and people that won't make decisions and then boom now we can fucking we can we can start parachuting into Wyoming and taking our fucking land that that's not they, fucking cold. No, they they don't they don't need to. They don't <laughs> need Wyoming's to. pretty cold. They, they, they might they, start with the West Coast. They yeah. don't need to because they started planting the seeds generations ago within an ideology which ultimately they believed in and they knew it was going to take generations in order to implement. They stuck to it. Their timing was off. But if we think Russia is our friend. We just have to look back at the previous election and say, hmm, regardless of where you fall in party, they manipulated the fuck out of social media. They absolutely orchestrated probably one of the single largest information operations in the history of mankind. Absolutely. We fell directly into the trap. And the thing that I can't figure out is why in the fuck are people not talking about this? Like, why are we not... Jumping up and down going, hey, guys, like, so... Because it's embarrassing, We get it. Kevin. It's fucking super <laughs> it's embarrassing. Like, you see your buddy trip on the other side of the room, and you pretend you didn't see it, so you don't have yeah. to deal with the shared embarrassment. And that's what people are doing in this country right now. They're just like, oh, I didn't see that. It's no big deal. Uh, it's just a conspiracy. I don't care where you fall, man, whether you were <laughs> Democrat or Republican. A foreign country manipulating information, subgroups, and culture in order to cause chaos... Brother, that's that, I, that's an act of war. 
That is an act of fucking war. And when you look at this dude and people fucking talk about Putin, oh, he's riding around on bears, what a cool motherfucker. It's like, that guy is a socialist fucking pig that is trying to change the way the world thinks and implement a very strategic information war against us and has been since the day that guy fucking literally could speak, I would imagine. And the sooner but this we're country busy calling wakes up, Trump Nazis. <laughs> yeah, we're busy, but that's where they win. That's where they win. Yeah, yeah. Instead of us going, hey, hey the, real, <laughs> the real enemy is outside of the fucking borders of the United States, and they are at war with you every day, manipulating the platforms that you fucking spend all your precious time on, sucking away your minutes and taking away from your kids, your family, and actually issues that fucking matter. What you're doing is you're buying into a false narrative built by a foreign country that will ultimately cause you to hate another person within the borders of your country so they can cause you to vote a specific way and or not vote. The only thing they give a fuck about is chaos. And the sooner they wake up, the sooner we wake up, the better this fucking country will be. And I'll tell you what, I'm pissed off, man. I'm pissed off about it because it's not about Trump. It's not about Hillary. It's not about Bernie. It's not about any of these people. It's about check your facts when you look at the news and the news cycle, it's clearly just about fucking traffic and eyeballs. We all know it. But fucking pick up a pick up a book, America. <clears throat> fucking read like something from two decades ago. Maybe flip a page or Amazon Fire or Kindle. I don't give a fuck. But people have to understand yeah. what the fuck they're doing. You like, know, they really do. It's it's uh, all these people that are Trump haters, and you know, I but, liked it. Yeah, that's, I'm motivated. Yeah, that's right a good. Now. That's a great rant. You yeah. need to run for president eventually. Eventually. Yeah. 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 yeah so ran, then, run for president. Yeah. Like, we've all seen how well that goes for everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> especially, especially any conservative. You know, the, like the, any. Hey guys, I uh, I got China to just uh, do away with our debt. Well, boo, boo, <laughs> fuck you. What did you trade for it? Yeah. Well, hey, I, I want to build you know, a wall that we've Louisiana? been asking for. <laughs> I'll be the Evan, first guy I'm to tell with you, you, by the way. I, I, I've been tracking this on Twitter for about four years. I'm convinced, because I, I follow Twitter a lot for news in particular. On, on your phone, you get about 20 topics, right? The top 20 topics right. that are trending. I'm convinced at least four to six a day are planted by Russia simply to stir chaos. Because in order to start a hashtag that's so bizarre of like Trump is a Nazi or something else, right? nobody's thinking that same exact thought at that same exact time on Twitter unless it's created by bots. Or if something happens Correct. during the Super Bowl or a massive event, none of that shit has been happening. Um, now, if, if he gives a speech from the Rose Garden or whatever, and then there's a, you know, a key catchphrase or whatever, then I understand it. Most of these hashtags on Twitter aren't coming from that. And then Lara Logan was on a podcast last night. Um, yeah, she, uh, Mic Drop. Yes, she was on Mic Drop. Yeah. And she said 85 to 90% of the media is all liberal. All of this is dog shit. Nobody's, nobody's checking their sources. You need at least two sources to go forward. But it doesn't matter because you're caught up in a news cycle. Once you get clicks, boom, you could be wrong the next day, much like yeah, this Jesse. Yeah, it doesn't matter headline anymore. Is all your, and that's, the headline is that's all it, and then you move on to the next thing. But Twitter doesn't that, care. Russia doesn't fucking care. The only no, person who, who should be held accountable is Zuckerberg and fucking Jack Dorsey for this bullshit. Because, yes, you're 100% right. I think Russia's controlling all this stupid shit to tear us apart. Race isn't that fucking bad. The president's not that goddamn bad. But it's making it seem like it. And it's making us call yeah. each other cocksuckers well, on Twitter all every these, day. All these yeah. people that are whining about Trump all the time and how he's not, whatever the fuck, right? Uh, CNN and other news outlets jumping on like this Jussie Smollett bullshit without yeah. any actual facts. Here's any a, facts. Here's a quick list. So the remember that thing in Michigan, Muslim woman faked yeah. an attack. Yeah. Then there was the uh, bisexual student at mm -hmm. North Park University. Faked. Gas yeah. station uh, thing. Faked. Uh, the white men rob a Muslim woman of her hijab never happened. Faked. There's like a list of fucking look at all these. Yeah. This is just a list of fake shit that the new the media fake. has picked up on. They're they're whining about Trump. Guess what? All this just got him reelected in 2020. It's fucking over already. It's over. Like <laughs> his, <laughs> his whole his campaign <laughs> mantra that the the media is full of shit and you can only trust him. What? <laughs> and, 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 and we what just it, fucking did it, guys. What what it does is it's like 
the thing that really irritates me about this is it starts to validate fringe news outlets. And trust me when I say this, I'm no fan of InfoWars, but I'll tell you what, what it does is it starts to validate fringe news, news outlets that quite literally, how much research are they doing? But you, they're none, right? It's like, well, I don't know. You know, it's controlled by fucking alien reptiles. Like, bro, come on, man. Like, you talk about a theory that's, like, pulled out of fucking thin air and validated by the history channels like ancient aliens. Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the sooner we start living in, like, factual information, you can touch it. Okay, do you see racism evidence. around here? Evidence. Yeah. Hey, do you see racism? Uh, I don't know. I think the last time, and, and, and I think this, this, this statistic will hold, which is there are, like, 12,000. White supremacists. Like yeah. White supremacists yeah. in the United States. Everybody else doesn't believe in that bullshit. Yeah. Especially our generation. We don't fucking believe in that bullshit. And if you do, you're on the fringe. You're in the extreme minority. And it is extreme chaos propagated by and well orchestrated by somebody that has a lot of money and a lot of influence. And all this is, if people would just start to kind of open their eyes, shake the dust off, maybe tune out of their phones and tune into their lives a little bit more, they would start to see, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not It's not really the case. It's not really that bad. A border wall? Dude, $5 billion is fucking budget dust to the United States. Yeah, it that's is, but pork. We lost yeah, but that in the been... back. We lost that out of our back pocket in one of our wars that we fought in the last two decades. <laughs> we don't give a fuck about $5 billion. Well, the Iraq war cost $5 trillion by itself. It, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> Like, I don't know. You think we didn't, need a wall? Didn't but Obama, who gives a didn't shit Obama if we have a give wall? Iran $140 billion? Yeah, hey, yeah, for those four fucking people. Yeah, but let's let's not talk about facts, and you know, <laughs> let's not talk about facts. Let's talk about things that will incite violence and pit people against each other, <clears throat> and talk about racism and xenophobia and all these other things. Which is, and, and I love this fact, and it cru cruises around social media all the time, where it's like, well. If you don't need a border wall, then you sure shit don't need that fence around your, your, or your front community door. <laughs> or, or your house, right? Because fences don't work, according to you. Fuck it. You know what? Just open up your doors. Let anybody and everybody come in. Maybe we just institute that policy in America where there's no more fences anywhere. No They're doors. just not allowed. I would say, fuck it. I would go the other way if I was Trump. I would say, great. You don't, you don't give me a border wall? I'm going to make fences and walls illegal across the United States. <laughs> we're going to start fucking down. We're going to tear, tear them all down. down. Hey, fucking how burn them? How long do you think that shit would last before people are like, hey, you know what? We should give this guy that fucking five billion dollar budget dust that we just forgot in our couch cushions and give him a wall. <laughs> By the way, I'm in just, I'm enjoying listening. Whether today. or not you agree with a wall or not, it's good for the economy. Hey, I I think it's such a incredibly ridiculous issue. When I say that, I know it's extremely important to a lot of different people, but it won't change immigration policy. Yeah, but well, it doesn't change well, anything, uh, guys. Robert O. Stupid, you know his 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 speech was uh, <laughs> walls kill people. Oh, Beto, you're yeah. talking about Beto, your yeah. boy Beto. Uh, I don't Beto. call him Beto. You don't just change your name <laughs> to be no. a fucking Mexican when you're a white hey. Irishman. Hey, dude, that, his, <laughs> his 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 Hispanic nanny. <laughs> gave him that name so he can take it. And he was you know? a fucking dirtbag in El Paso, and he's still a dirtbag. Yeah, he, he, like, he, gave his, he gave his speech the other night in El Paso. Uh, so, so did Trump. Um, I think nine people showed up to his. But still, it's like, I, I, and, and, and I've explained this to a couple people because I've actually done border operations in the military. And it's like there is a large, and this is just one piece, there's a large stretch in southern Arizona where, it's over 100 to 180 miles from the nearest town in Mexico to this area of Arizona. And the bodies they find out there are in the thousands of people trying to cross there because they know there's no wall. Right. But it's like they, they don't have water. They don't have supplies. So they, there's just thousands of bodies that are, that are picked well, the up. The coyotes and that are taking them like, across are fucking like, ruthless, so, man. Okay, maybe we'd save a bunch of people from even trying if we put a stretch out there. 
Like, ah, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't try the 180 mile walk in the desert. Well, th- yeah, and and that's kind of on you know, like we're saying, the coyotes, man. They'll bring across you know 35 group guys of of Mexicans that are trying to come across the border. The second they hear a helicopter, they're back across the border into Mexico, and they're like, "Have fun with no water and food, kids and girls," mm. and they're just dying. <laughs> no navigation experience. Yeah. How many how many how many border patrol agents do we know that are working? They just like come across dead it's families. Just, it's mm, fucking massive sad. amounts of bodies. It's a loss out there. of human life, yeah. but. It is true. I do like your point. It's like you get the tribe to fight, right, internally, yeah. and then you don't see the envelopment happening on the building. It's, yeah. it's pretty basic tactics. Russia's like that. Super basic. And for, like, this, this is the, the equivalent of literally a base, like just hitting base hits in information operations. Like mm-hmm. that, That's all it is. Over time, this yeah. Is, this is They're playing so small ball, yeah. easy. That, and, and people are so duped. And they're falling into this trap, and they're like, well, Facebook told me so. And part of it is a generational thing where I've talked to older people where they're like, well, guys, did you see that on the Facebook? Well, Facebook published it. It's like Facebook yeah, but didn't can't publish even say that. that. Facebook didn't publish ABC that. ABC News now is publishing horseshit. Like ABC, NBC, everybody is publishing horseshit headlines for clicks. Like I even saw recently this uh, the, this headline that, uh, you know, the Portland chief of police was caught colluding with with uh, far right demonstrators, you know, to to essentially disrupt uh, well, Antifa. And when you read the article, it was two paragraphs. OK, right. if this was true. If this was a real, but it was on ABC, but if this was a true thing that they have cell records and text messages from the chief of police, like planning with an alt-right fucking demonstration so that they could win, like, why is it just two paragraphs? Why is it less than fucking 400 words? But that's the like, crazy <laughs> part about our society these days. Everybody loves hysteria, right? And it's yeah. it's false hysteria. And then what they don't want to do, they don't want to focus on actual things like it, as simple as... You, they don't want to think about a kid that's dying of cancer and how we can help them. They want to think about Kelly that said something, you know, said fuck to her boss, and then they, and then they'll rant fucking a gajillion million characters on Facebook and Instagram, and it's it's crazy to me. In the same way, I'm sure everybody here, it's just it, no one wants to deal with reality anymore. They want to deal with fucking hysteria. No, they're going to tune into some Russian information about <laughs> how you know there's a bunch of Nazis in America. And then they're going to go look at Kim Kardashian's ass for a while. I do that And then sometimes. they're going to go mm. eat fucking, you know, <laughs> no, 50,000 I mean, calories they placated. down the street from their fucking house. And they're going to go back. And it's like, man, they, they identified and placated to the, to the culture that Facebook created. And it was once every person in America all of a sudden had a voice. Then it created jealousy to people that had bigger voices to every normal person. And now these headlines and everything is everyone's bait to get a conversation, to get arguing, to get comments, to get likes, to get shares, to get anything. It's like, ooh, let me push this out to pi- either piss my friends off or get them to to comment on it or get them to yeah. agree with well, me. And that's we were talking about this morning, like the hypocrisy involved in all of this. Like if you're pro-free speech, then you have to be pro-free speech. Yeah. That's all what of it. Is. Well, all no, of it. It's like we, we talked this morning, like, yeah. and this is just a fucking microcosm example, but like, you know, your pussy makes me whistle just got taken off of Instagram. And within one click of searching fitness, I found like 60 naked girls. I found like rap artists that were using racial slander in all of their music, talking about like hitting bitches in the face and, you know, all this stuff. You're like, well, you which one's right? You can't just fucking draw a squiggly line in the sand and all this bullshit. And, you know, it, it, it is what it is, you know, but fuck, man, they're just picking what they want. And then, hey, free speech. Oh, wait, I don't like that over there. Let's just fuck them. And because it's run by liberal media, like they're, they're targeting. I truly believe this. And maybe this is my tin hat that like conservatives that are outward facing pro gun. They're, they're, they're hyper restrictive on anything. And oh, the community absolutely. guidelines are so fucking nasty on guys like me. All the button like, pushers are sitting in, in, in I've had, San Francisco. Yeah, I've had yeah. two posts deleted. One was me holding my wife's tits and it was our marriage thing saying, I love this woman. I'm so happy to be with her for the rest of my life. That got deleted like, I don't know, a year ago. And it wasn't even vulgar. 
there was like a little bit of cleavage in there. And then again, you go to all these other ones and there's TNA. There's fucking I, somebody sent me when I posted on my story today, like a like a legit nutsack getting hit by this vehicle or hey, something. We, like, uh, it's still up. Like, what the fuck? We man? got a we got a nasty phone call about your song. Yeah, yeah, that was oh, great. Tell us about oh, that. Boy. Oh, it was just some customer that called in and said I'm an absolute misogynist. And uh, why? Your you, war, you, you, give wa- you, did a, your wife. you did a song worshiping a, a woman. I your know wife. My, my wife, and that's the funny part. He's like, "You fucking misogynist!" And and one of our customer service agents was absolutely great and said, "Hey, Matt published that content on his channels and his channels alone and what he does. Plus, they have a podcast. I'm sure you can listen to their perspective on life and understand that Matt would never like coerce his wife into doing something that she doesn't want to do. She thought it was hilarious, and and then she thought my dick makes her hum. And so we wrote a song about it. You know." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you could call that. You, you're worshiping a woman. I, that, I don't. That, I don't know misogyny. how. I don't know yeah, how. Don't know. Within the last, what we'll call it, three decades, we've got to the point of it's the pendulum. music where it's like, uh, and we we can we can all just pull out our iTunes and pull up a, a video on YouTube or any of one of these accounts and say there are a thousand songs playing or more probably that are hyper derogatory no, that, that are really that's the, dude that's the funny that thing are racist and, yeah. yes and, and it, this is a humor based con this is a Takashi humor 69 is in jail with for your fucking wife murder. with right. your wife yeah and i'm not even justifying it like it is what it is, it is what i don't is. give a fuck right but the the hilarity in all of it is that you know people will find offense to me saying your pussy makes me whistle to my wife completely clothed yet They'll turn that off, write a comment saying, I'm a disgusting pig. Turn on Cardi B when she's like, get on your knees and eat my pussy, you bitch boy. Yeah. You know, and you're just like, okay, where's the line, guys? Like, so that's not offensive because it's a rap song, but then because I'm like a conservative American that's, you know, a patriot and pro Second Amendment that I'm a fucking piece of shit because I believe in like a certain set of values or your construct of what you think I believe in based off of a fucking generic label. Get fucked, you moron. Yeah, Matt. And to that point, man, your video stopped showing up on on my feed probably about eight or nine months ago. And let's face it. I only have a handful of friends. You're one of them. Um, I should be seeing your videos at the top of my feed until you switch to Facebook watch. That's when your video started showing up again. But I'm assuming it's because Facebook makes more money off of you for doing that. Um, but that's the hilarious part about this. They're, 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 they're so hypocritical in their stance where content, content contributors like myself, and there's a lot of them in the conservative space, are actually driving people to f- get Facebook you know, pages and get Instagram pages and follow us, which drives higher viewership, which drives better ad revenue for them, yet they're restricting us because they just don't like us, and there's no grounds for it. I yeah, mean, if they were we're smart, not doing anything illegal. No. We're, not, we're not influencing we don't, we don't anything. Sell guns. I'm not fucking chugging a bottle of whiskey in my car and saying like let's go hit women in the face like that's what fucking rappers are doing yet you're allowing them to publish it's it's just like i'm not trying to get i'm not butthurt about it i'm just it's fucking hilarious like yeah pick a side motherfucker exactly so evan let me ask you this where does all of this end up eventually because to me this is a spiral of fucking death that's not going to stop until something really awful happens. Is there any way for Twitter and Facebook and and these guys to get together and say, hey, man, no more fucking bots, no more fucking Russia. Separate the feeds. There's a United States feed. There's a a Russia feed. How do you get this this cycle of endless viciousness to end? That's the problem is you have to have... uh, you have to have the the means, obviously, with the platform, the motivation. And I don't think they have the motivation. I think what they yeah. they look at and they say, you know, it's I, a not it, my problem. It's That's, a not my problem, yeah. and it's their job is to drive impressions and keep people on the platform. They have admitted it. It is something that that is their sole purpose is to keep people engaged and on the platform. With the algorithm shifts. That have taken place, I think, across the board. This has dramatically increased this type of relationship with us and social media, and then us and people within our communities. So, unless they they make a very hard stance in free speech, which is free for all, outside of I would say a couple different issues, right? Which is your threat violence. Your, the threat of violence is a legitimate thing, yeah. right? And and honestly, when it's like doxing, and I I think and I listened to the interview with. Uh, with Jack Dorsey on on Rogan show, too. and he, he got and he got he got things. killed for that. By the way, you know that, right? Rogan got yeah, destroyed yeah. for that. 
And, you know, I talked to Andy. Andy Stump was just on uh, Rogan's show yesterday. I talked to Andy about that. You know, obviously, we have a loose affiliation. When I say that, it's very loose with uh, with Rogan in the context of we've advertised with him. Uh, we appreciate his content, what he puts out. Like, the dude is hilarious. He's also a comedian. He's not a professional journalist. His platform is his platform. When I say that, like, it's not as if it's the Joe Rogan network. You know, he is still within the community guidelines, whether it's YouTube or any of these other things. Like, the guy is not a journalist. He's a comedian that puts out a show. And so I, I get both sides of it where... Do you want to tell the guy before he comes on the show that, hey, dude, I'm going to fucking fry you? And oh, by the way, is that his job? Is, yeah. it, is, it, is it Joe Rogan, the comedian's job, to fry people on his show now? No. Is that his because responsibility? Because then no one's going to fucking come on. Well, that's the thing. Is it his responsibility? So is everybody looking at him going, hey, dude, you're a legitimate source of information. You have millions of downloads, millions of followers. So your responsibility is to bring people on and fucking fry them for three hours? Is it his responsibility to drive the narrative of the national conversation? Now, and I think, so I'm going to circle back on this, which is people are starved for legitimate information. And that's one of the reasons why his show is so successful because you can dive deep into a conversation with a, with, with a real guy, real people talk yeah. about real issues and get to the kind of the meat of the matter. So, but this backlash against a comedian for, for not like shredding the guy. Well, one, what's the preparation for that look like? You're talking about days and days and days of research. Preparation. Like, so now is the expectation that, Hey, Joe Rogan, and he's you're doing a comedian, five, five a week, five. Yeah. You're a comedian. You're the UFC host. You've got this great platform. But oh, by the way, we also want you to be a professional journalist and live up to this professional journalistic standard, which I don't know if there is one anymore, because we can't turn to get legitimate news from anyone else. I and, and for him to come out and apologize, I get, you know, that's that's he came out and apologized like, hey, I'm going to have him back on the show. And he brought a couple other hosts in to talk about the show specifically, guys that were very educated on the on the matter. And you could see, or you could hear it at least if you, you're listening to the show, you could hear, man, this guy's legitimately, uh, I, he's legitimately sorry that he didn't ask deeper questions and ask more of Jack Dorsey. But I don't believe that... Jack Dorsey was manipulating the situation because he was uh, an advertiser on the show with the cash app and a bunch of this other stuff. There's a bunch of conspiracy theories floating around that are, you know, they're, they're kind of insane. I think the guy just had him on a show. Didn't really think much of it. It was like, I'm going to have a three hour conversation and we'll dive into the things that we want to dive in. And at the end of the day, if Jack Dorsey's on the other side of the table going, I don't know, what are you supposed to say? You do know, you do know, (laughs) come on, you do know, come on, you know, how well is that going to go? So I I just think that you can, I mean, from my perspective, obviously I'm a little bit biased. I think it's an unrealistic expectation to hold Rogan show to this, this standard of you're going to bring CEOs on and fucking demolish them. And two, they're not going to come on. So they just won't. Hey, this is going to be a three hour shred fest, dude. So get ready because I'm going to hand you your ass. Is that really the, 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 the platform that he has? And that, is that a realistic expectation for us to have for, for the Rogan show? Is it? I don't know. No, I I, I don't think it is, but I I think it goes to your point of, look, I think his impressions per week or or per month. And this was when Alex Jones was on So it could be higher or about 90 million a month, right? He's bigger than CNN and all these other fucking networks uh, almost combined essentially oh my god so like that that's that's insane yeah so there 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 is some expectation uh, much like yeah. the daily show when when john stewart was hosting the daily show they would come after john stewart for not going after guests sometimes who were on the show and he was like hey i'm a comedian and an entertainer this is not right. real news and i think that's right. rogan's point as well of like hey man it's not my fucking job like if you go on 60 minutes you know what you're getting on 60 minutes but this is a Joe Rogan show where I smoke weed and drink whiskey. Like, don't expect yeah. me to go after these fucking people. He's 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 ripping fucking blunts with guys on the show. Are we really like? <laughs> Where's like, our news? Yeah, but I think that's I think that's the I thing don't is, know, man, is anybody because some people crackers? because people trust him. You know, they do. They trust the information. They trust that he has their best interest. They want to see you know Joe push 
on specific things that they want to see. And that, and that you know, if he's up to yeah, 90 that, million. That's like saying Jared and I, four fucking vodkas deep, are going to navigate geo politics like it's just not gonna happen global warming yeah, yeah right. like yeah, sorry yeah, God, we're just not the dudes we're here to have fun and give her opinions and 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 talk through a show and hopefully bring entertainment to people on their drives or their nights right. or you know fuck which on that let's do a hard pivot right now hard pivot, hard. Hard. Hard pivot. like let's do like a race car turn and turn this thing around yeah. before, maybe before a race we, car that wins be, before, we that, <laughs> before we do okay. that before we do that before we do that okay one more thing on this, yep, send this it. amazon send it pulling out of queens <laughs> and cortez's narrative like we're gonna take we're gonna spend three billion dollars we could somewhere spend else that three billion dollars on, on, on subways and our community so it, and this is this is like I love this socialist this 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 socialist side of things where they're like we're just going to take this fictional money that doesn't exist unless the company moves in and creates that type of revenue within that zip code that capital doesn't exist. Well, are you? And I was I was watching this on the news. Why the other day. isn't the governor in her fucking ass right now? Because they're also afraid. Because she's got this big platform. She's speaking. Yeah, but like, that governor is, should come out and go, hey, guys, <laughs> she just lost us $27 yeah. billion dollars in revenue no. over the course of four years. You know, how many, how many jobs was it? Something like how many jobs? Or it was, it was 50 or 25,000 jobs. Yeah. With six figure incomes. 150,000 median yeah, uh, income. Within Queens. Queens. And, you know, by the way, we she saw this as a victory no, you know, against her, the, the her big people bad, in Queens the big should bad have billionaire. they should be having her ass. Yeah, like God. agreed. Like, I, wait a minute, we were about to get some fucking yeah. dope ass jobs. Wait a minute, and, we we're gonna have then, a bunch of fucking. But, but also the the second third order effects. What would have happened to that area? They would have dumped fucking it, hundreds of millions of dollars into new apartments, new fucking shopping centers, new everything. You would have gotten new roads, new like. All you have to do is. Drive downtown in Seattle to support, and see and yes, see the effects to support of Amazon a location that has twenty five thousand people inside of it. Like you would have gotten, you would have gotten your dream. Queens would have turned into, you know, Austin. Quite. The, the, this was such a a a the the magnitude of which this astounds me when I look at this and I look at the narrative. I think how dumb can people really be? Yeah. It, it, and she, when she said that on the news, I'm, I never talk to the TV. I'm not a crazy person. <laughs> like I don't do this. Like I'm not. I'm not 70 years old. But I turned on. I, I watch Meet the Press every weekend. That's what I do. And uh, they had a clip on her, and I was yelling at the TV. My kids weren't in the room. My wife's like, "What the fuck is going on?" I'm like, "She's an idiot. Oh my god, she's an idiot. She doesn't understand that this doesn't exist." Like this she, money doesn't exist. You don't yeah. just like pull money out of the fucking thin air. Well, I mean, she's always ran on that. Like, yeah. so here, what do you think the play is? Do you think, okay, so the stats are only 6,000 people voted for this election and 4,000 voted for her. So it wasn't like, you know, she runs around. I'm the youngest, blah, 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 blah. It's like, bro, you, you, you barely pulled anybody out to vote, but okay. You won. You got that. Okay. They get her out in two, two years. Like then what, what does she do then? Is she oh. going to try and move and run for a new district? Porn. She's she's going to she's, gonna she's, she's moving on Book up, man. Deal. I, I think I think what we're seeing <laughs> yeah. is you, you had this you know the 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 uh, Tea Party slide of what year was that when the Tea Party really got some significant traction? Right around that, right around oh eight, uh, yeah, like yeah, yeah it was, oh nine. It was, it was, so is the, the Obama was elected. The Tea Party was kind of the backlash to the Obama election, right? Right. And so then you have the rough equivalent of the more extreme progressive portions of the party, which, and I'm not equating them in the same bucket. I, I really don't know enough about it. I know with the uh, Tea Party when they were when they were first formed, I thought, yeah, this is a legitimate libertarian stance. Uh, I, you know, smaller government in my mind is always better. Like I'm just a smaller government guy. That's the way that I, I think. Uh, but this progressive narrative now is we're just going to fight, uh, the moronic news cycle with more moronic shit just to feed this beast of dumb information that people can buy into. This election is going to be a circus. She did it. She did a service Mm -hmm. to the Queens. Because she's right. They could take 
three billion dollars and rebuild the city. They could put a lot of people. We don't to have work. that. <laughs> no, yeah. that's the beautiful yeah. thing about no, it. No, is no. like everybody's like, yeah, man, she's right. No, she's not. <laughs> the she's not right. Twins go. <laughs> she's not right. Oh, what do you, who do you want to come in here, Dollar General? Yeah. Hey, we're coming in, Dollar General, with fifty-three no. new jobs. You know, you know what they need? <laughs> they need. They need more. They need more like four hundred square foot corner stores yeah. that sell all the trinkety bullshit and cigarettes and everything else. Yeah. They just need more of those. That, yeah. That's what they need. That could that's jobs. what they need in Queens. <laughs> jobs. Right? Just, they're just going to create a bunch of fucking really below minimum wage jobs. That's what they're going to do. It's yeah. called the, the trinkety bullshit uh, economic revolution in Queens. Go for it, guys. <laughs> I, I just, I'm interested stand. to see what the people of Queens have to say about this, and I hope somebody's out there interviewing them or educating uh, them. Jared hey. actually there is um, so this just happened last week her documentary at Sundance uh, sold for 10 million dollars to Netflix which why is there a documentary is, about is a one? record for a documentary she, um, she hasn't done anything I, I, that's what I'm curious to see so she's only going to get bigger if, if Netflix spent 10 only million on bigger. this thing they're, they're they're rolling out a trailer and a bunch of fucking ads for it 10 million dollars is a massive price to pay for a documentary especially for somebody who only has six yeah. months worth of footage that's that's the great question um <laughs> that and also too like is, is does that mean she can get an apartment in DC now <laughs> yeah she's living in a high-rise right now and everybody's asking how she's paying for it Oh, it's God. just a good episode. Right, you ready? Of Peter Griffin, yeah. what grinds my gears? Yeah. 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 You ready to hit? You ready to hit those race brakes? Yeah, you know, grind some gears is a race car. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I always like Steve Arpin. What's up, Steve Arpin? <laughs> Let's just have at it, Matt. Give it to me. I know you've been waiting all morning no, for this moment. I have not. <laughs> So you think I'm going to be an a-hole and say some things? Not at all. Uh, <laughs> I am because I was on his team. Well, JT flew in a professional race car driver. Is that a is that a correct definition of what yes. you do? Uh, I guess yeah. we could go there. Race car, I mean, rally I make, car. I make a rally. living driving a race car. Okay. And he's still lost. My <laughs> to, battery to compete, went dead. To compete in hey, a racing event. <laughs> <laughs> and still lost. Still this lost. Was a, yeah. What it was, was the was event? Challenge, Just, yeah. Describe the event it was, to, to it the was, audience. It was good. It was I. It was a charity challenge. It was a charity challenge at um, what the fuck is that? R one R- K one K one K one speed. Yeah. So yeah. it's the electric. That was carts. pretty cool. It, it was fun. It was a cool. It was place. super fun. And you, you can drive better we, than all of us. Let's we, be real. We, we yeah. did do some damage, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was some Steve, sore. Steve wasn't ready for us to play bumper cars. <laughs> and then... You guys exploded one of the cars. <laughs> like, there hey, were dude. pieces all over the hey. track. We, we had a red flag, and JT and I are sitting there looking. We had to call a guy over to pick up Bro, bolts and screws off the race. It's track. war fighting by any means necessary, dude. <laughs> those poor, all those kids, too. They were I, all, like, under 22, just terrified of their jobs. I literally thought... Going into this, I was thinking, I am willing to have some type of cast in yeah. order to win in this. I, I don't. I was like, I hope it's not on my neck. I just hope that it's not there. But I'm gonna fuck you guys up. I have like, a that giant was my, bruise was on my right foot because when I came Showing in and just yours. tagged him in the back. Oh, he's got war wounds too. <laughs> that, that's from my teammate, though. That's the problem. <laughs> what, what kind of cars were you guys fuck. driving? They're carts. They're electric carts. Electric go carts. But they were nice enough to do uh, no speed restrictions, and so yeah. I mean, by the third race, no, that only we were lasted crazy fucking people. three laps before they put speed restrictions back on the last one. The first red flag, they toned us back a little bit. The second red flag, we got pulled back a little bit more. Yeah, yeah they're like, you guys, we're gonna have to shut this down. That that was and the next. There, no, that was and the there was no, and everybody was sober. Yeah, completely sober. <laughs> I don't know about that. We, I, I was at happy hour before we went there, so speak for yourselves there. Well, Steve, why don't you give us some of your background, what you, what yeah, you did. You grew up in Canada, and then how'd you get into racing, and you've done some phenomenal uh, um, things in the racing world, and moreover, I believe you got like the, what, what was the award you got, like the be- best racer, or? No, it was second. He got second. Oh, sorry. I got a participation trophy last night. <laughs> I mean, I'm <laughs> sure Ross, we got. Ross knows all about him. I do. I, Look, I, I know in 2009 yeah. you finished seventh, um, you know, in, in, in our co- <laughs> God, Whatever. I'm not assholes. here to talk about you finishing seventh. Um, <laughs> you, I think I missed races that year and still finished seventh. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You guys are essentially doing what Joe Rogan 
what they wanted him to do. You're just ridiculing our wonderfully nice <laughs> guests that came in to hang out with us. I'm not. Uh, Look, totally fine we, we tear that. him down to build him up. Uh, you're, you've done Global Rally Cross, uh, the championship, uh, the ARCA Race Series, NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, and the Nationwide Series. So you've driven stock cars. Did you watch Daytona 500 on, on Sunday? I, I watched everyone tear the hell out of all their equipment on Sunday. Yes, that was a wreck fest. My God, I've never really that, that was oh, that was bad. one of the craziest worst races I've ever seen. They couldn't get through two laps without smashing into each other. What there happened? were seven cars left at the end, and they were still wrecking. Are you <laughs> serious? There <laughs> seven. Yeah. seven. Oh wow. <laughs> What like, seriously? And seven. As, and as a as a as a guy that runs a race team, you're just seeing dollars, dollars. out the window. That was the like. biggest mistake I ever made in my racing career. Was I got into Mad Gina race team and ordering the spare parts and paying for everything, figuring out how to pay for everything. And my God, do you think differently before diving into a corner when you have to figure out how to pay for all this shit? You're so are you guys, the car. do you guys have to actually purchase the team the parts, or is that part of like the sponsorship for you? The team have to cover down on those. The, the team the, the team covers all that. So I'm race car driver by weekend general manager of a race team during the week so okay. i do all that we're at the shop full time it's a it's a cool program we have so going back i started in go-karts when i was young with okay. the with the stupid little bowl cut i'll show you a picture later as ugly <laughs> as can be but started racing dirt track oval go-karts growing up switched to dirt track modified slate models uh, some mini sprints and stuff growing up and raced all over the country, all over Canada, all over the States, and just had a blast. And then actually got, got into a pretty bad deal in Daytona back in 2008, I think it was, and ended up in a hospital for a while. Got what? burnt really bad. Oh, shit. And it just opened up. It's one of those deals. Is that, that out was, of a truck? What's that? No, that was a dirt car. Oh, wow. So that's when Carl Edwards actually came. And he, uh, I had a bunch of sponsors on board for that week, and he came and drove my car for me just to try and help out the sponsorship and just destroyed it. Just backed it into the fence and killed the thing. But it got all sorts of attention, and that uh, that kind of launched me into my NASCAR career. What's your... Oh, you... you Jeez, NASCAR. Wow, man. <laughs> yeah, you were. it says you were in the, the NASCAR X- Xfinity series, man, right? We beat a no, NASCAR No, we got we to <laughs> get into this. Like, when, how you got into rally, because he was, he was doing circle track. Yeah, because oh. that's that's one corner, dude. Like that's not very complicated. Well, we call it four. You can pretty much we call just, it four. You to can make pretty it much sound just better. tie the the steering wheel down and go to sleep, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I will give those guys a little bit of credit because I I watched it my whole life. It's like God, that looks easy. How like, much you caffeine should, did you, you have see today? me in my dirt None. car, right? Well, and, you know, at, Travis put me on the simulator at his house, and we've <clears> spent about two hours, and I still wrecked every lap. It it's is fucking so hard. hard. The NASCAR stuff is the real, so the, hard. <laughs> To, you can get out there and you can run 10th, 15th, 20th and be all right, right? But getting the, that extra three, four tenths of a second to be a, a top contender like the Kyle Bushes, the Jimmy Johnsons, the Kevin Harvicks, what those guys do is pretty – it's incredible. It is so hard to actually make those cars drive on that much of the edge for 500 miles. Right. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty taxing on your body, isn't it? Oh, you're so, fighting. Yeah, so – the NASCAR side of things and rallycross, what I do now, are just it's like two completely different thrills. NASCAR is like a, a mental, like an, a, a mental adrenaline, like it just it's taxing on the mind. Not not near as much physical on the physical side. It just gets so damn hot in those things, and you're in there for 500 miles. Have they thought about maybe doing like air cruise control, <laughs> power steering, <laughs> and AC? Yeah, because that would make your life a lot yeah. easier. Everybody's yeah. driving so a Tesla. My, my full pro, I've been too much of a fat ass my whole life, <laughs> and all the air conditioning. And you didn't too much extra weight in the car. So they tell the fat kid that if you want air conditioning, you have to lose more weight. So so I never had air conditioning. Wow. But uh, but they do have air conditioning units uh, in the car that pumps cold air into your helmet. Uh, if you get really fancy, Are pump the, it is into racing, your seat. Is racing like jockeys where you, like the smaller the better as far as the driver? Yes. Really? That weight is everything in race cars anymore. Weight. The technology has all got so far that that the biggest thing you can do is cut weight and put the weight in the perfect places to to maximize the handling of the car. So the perfect place isn't high up on my tits. Okay. Not, <laughs> no. Hey, because I would say that's the perfect place to hold weight. Speaking speaking of tits, right? you filled in for Danica you know. Patrick. Uh, yeah, so when Jesus. Danica, when Dan- <laughs> well, the only woman in race, uh, that's this pretty amazing. Episode. How about is she in real life? What kind of rig is she, she packing? Uh, she's she, <laughs> she's pretty cute, but I'll give her, I'll give her credit. She's cool as hell. So she she didn't get near as near the credit she deserves. She works her ass off, and she started NASCAR. She went straight to the top levels of NASCAR within two years, and 
like the guys like Kevin Harvick and stuff have been doing it for 15 years and 20 years, and she was expected to go out there and compete with them right off the bat. So we should change that statement. You work your ass off. You work your ass on. Because you know when you work that an ass true. on, that's that's better. That is Everybody true. wants better. a booty. Right. That, Let's, that change Let's change that. Let's change that. What's your, what's your favorite vehicle to drive? Because you've done so much stuff, rally, NASCAR. Well, no, you got to and... hear this. Like he, the the call that you get for this rally thing. Oh, yeah. so yeah, my NASCAR career kind of took an immediate halt. I was sponsored by Mike's Hard Lemonade. Everything was going great. They got a new president. It's all Ross drinks, by yeah, the way. I love he it. I love it. Hey, to do it's the perfect motorsports. combination: is driving and Mike's Hard Lemonade. Exactly. Yeah. So I wish that's they sponsored exactly this show. Exactly what he said to me. He's like, <laughs> we just we just can't justify driving fast vehicles with our alcoholic beverage and. I that really doesn't make any that. sense. That's it. that's a, just a sponsorship thing. Like people know you're not supposed. Yeah, to I wasn't drink pounding them on driver right. intros before uh, like, I hopped into the so car. Did they, yeah. did, so they got rid of champagne at the very end, too, right? <laughs> yeah. So that <laughs> stopped, and then I was in my career was in shambles. I didn't know what I was going to do, and I got a call to go to Brazil to the X Games to race a rally car. So it was a couple weeks before the first race, I'd never seen a rally car before, never watched rally cross race. I sent my passport off as fast as I could to get a travel never visa. Never used a handbrake never or anything. Used. Like, <laughs> really? I, I walked up there. I didn't. This is how stupid I was. I'd never used anything, driven anything with a turbo before, right? Amen. I grew up on a farm in Canada. And I show up there and they're talking about the intercooler. I'm like, what? It's a radiator. Why are you calling this an intercooler? Right. But the radiator is in the back, so I guess that was to cool the air of the of the turbo. So interesting. Yeah, lesson huh. learned yeah. really did, quick did you for pl- me. Did you place did, in that? Did you place? Fourth, my first oh, race. Shit. So we ran fourth the first hey. race, and but you talk about what's the most fun. I've driven dirt car. I've raced bathtub boats. Is as stupid as that sounds. Race sea doo. I think we were talking about your your precious little sea <laughs> yeah. doo, weren't we? Jared, yeah, I, I don't have a sea doo. Yes, you do. You have a, you have a custom sea doo. No, no, so I raced that growing up. Snowmobiles, uh, dirt cars, sprint cars, light models, NASCAR, ARCA, trucks, everything, and. There is nothing that even comes close to being as fun as a rally cross car. These okay. are wow. just pissed off little, like, it's just like little bundles of technology in these things, what what they're capable of. It's unreal. You see Jared smirk over there. He's like, I have a Ford Focus. It's uh, yeah, As he it's, pulls uh, up to next to my Raptor, and he's like, we both have <laughs> Ford performance vehicles. Ford, like, we do. I Ford don't know about that. performance vehicles, we do. So the stupid part is the, the Ford Focus that I race, and I go out there and I pound on it and just – destroy the thing is a seven hundred seven hundred fifty thousand dollar ford focus wow. oh my so, god wow. is, wow. Is, so no thanks before Jared, the no so jealous before the restrictor it's got a thousand horsepower we race with about 650 horsepower zero to 60 in about 1.8 seconds sequential Whoa. gearbox full anti-lag system you got more than 50 pounds of boost the turbo is spinning at 155,000 rpm all the time we net we have no turbo all the time leg. We have no turbo lag ever. Ooh. It is, and they have to put the restrictor plate on to keep the air from going supersonic in the motor. So they're, oh, <laughs> they're restricted down to a forty-five millimeter restrictor to keep the air from going supersonic because that just adds up. I would want the air to go supersonic. That's what I want. Yeah, no. I, do not I want, want to pay air to go for faster. the air going yeah, supersonic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you're just doing this. It's just dollar, dollar, dollar. I don't Why? know. Why? Because the, of the, the electronics, yeah. the the oh, okay. the, yeah. the taxing, the, the what it's going to do to the I motors. I mean, if he we'll just, just drives his car at forty miles an hour for more than two minutes, you fucking blow it up. Yeah, if you have the anti lag system on and you're driving and you're not going hard, you will cook the thing. You'll cook the turbo in a matter of seconds. Interesting. No, can I, can I have a drive in this thing? Like, I don't want to drive it because I'll fucking yeah. break it. But I want to be. I want to see it number two seat. Absolutely. Yeah. Come on. We we went yeah. out. We were at Nitro World Games last year, and Karen from CBDMD came out. We gave her a ride, a ride around the racetrack, and the poor girl, she was black and blue afterwards. She was. Just, it's a it's a rough ride in those things, but my god, is it a lot? What of you're fun. saying, the Focus yeah. had like four inches of travel, but then your new Fiesta has eleven inches of travel. Yeah. So yeah, that's, I'll be in the Fiesta. I don't feel like back injuries. <laughs> the Focus was a rough yeah. ride there. My god, it was it was landing so hard it was downshifting on its own after some of those jumps. How high do you get on those jumps? Well, oh, Nitro World the Games, there was, yeah, a, show you there was some a, pictures. It was a hundred foot gap, and then there wow. was also cars jumping underneath you when you were in the air. That's there, that's cool. It was so. almost it was almost identical to the picture above my bed. That's that, really cool. that was the gap. Yeah, 
Yeah. I, I know some big gaps, and that's a big <laughs> gap. Same, yeah. <laughs> I knew one in college. That so was about a 100 feet. Gaping <laughs> that's, gaping. That's, that's a hot dog in a hallway kind of gap. <laughs> yeah. You've been there, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Look up one of his old, uh, you know, plenty of fish dates. And I'm sure I'll fit that gap <laughs> specification. Oh, boy. Is there a gap And that, their motors were blown out, too. Their electronics <laughs> were gone. It was. Yeah. There, was a, there was a lot of. That was like a yeah. boat. That was. It's like a boat. He used to replace the tranny every since, week. Since <laughs> it, was, it, it was like having a boat from the mid seventies, you know, and it just sat in a yard on a trailer. You know, the trailer tires yeah. are flat. Yeah, you know, you don't. You, Did don't, you, you don't know if that Evan Rude even starts. <laughs> Did you take Jared out? Jared's focus out yet? We played around in the parking lot yeah, a little bit. Well, you guys, that thing's going to be podcast. a lot of fun. Okay, how is yeah. it? Is, well, is it any good? Because we 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 stare at this fucking thing and we're like, Jesus Christ, Jared, what are you going to do? <laughs> well, with how this? can you miss it? Yeah, I can't miss it. Is it any good? <laughs> I I was actually shocked. That thing that thing is stuck to the ground. We only played around in the parking lot. I think we only got up to second gear, but yeah. I, I think that thing could be a lot of fun. Well, we're going to be driving it for one lap of America race. We uh, there, really there it goes. It's a, it, it is now official. <laughs> oh yeah, right? it is now official. <laughs> you and I are going to be doing one lap it of America. That is going. That is going to be trouble. So you've been <laughs> doing this since ten years old, at least racing. No, yeah. how how long do you think? Does a career last as far as age? I'm completely curious because, like, you know, you start, like, MMA 35, 40. You're, you're reaching the end of your career just based off of what you're doing. Like, like I know – how how old was Dale Earnhardt? I mean, he's in his 50s, right, on NASCAR. But- Absolutely. Yeah, so so obviously the sport has completely changed now, right? With the social media coming in, it's a complete different the, – the set of deliverables that you're giving your partners is so different than it used to be. It used to be just plain exposure and that's it. So now everything from the partnership standpoint is all tied to the business side of it. It and and what kind of a presence you have on social media and how much of an impact you can make from that standpoint. So obviously your window of relevance is probably a lot narrower than it used to be. So okay. so from that standpoint, it's probably a shorter window. So in my position, I've I've always been I've always been really into the business aspect of it and want to really get involved in making move, moving the needle for my partners, getting involved from that side of it, uh, being on the management side of the race team and, and being really involved from that. So my goal is at some point to be able to grow a set of partners within our race team and grow a set of sponsorship uh, partners that we can I can step back from being a driver at some point when that time comes and just work on managing the team. And then the hard part in racing now is for, for these young guys to come in and get an opportunity, they have to bring a check, right? right. And dad has to write a check or someone right. has to be funding them. And, and What's that check look like? Uh, it's, it's big. It's, it's big. Seven uh, it's figures. Big. Yeah, uh, easy that's, seven figures for, that's the for crazy, one year. Yeah, whoa, yeah. that's the crazy thing to me because you know here's a a, a down on his luck poor guy in his forties, you know Ken Block, and you know <laughs> he, <laughs> how he was he was able to just how did how did yeah. he go from like I'm just a forties for you know forty something year old guy that wants to race. To you know, being as successful as he has. I honestly, <laughs> he was my teammate last year. He ran with us at Lone Bro Motorsports last year, and it is not by accident that he has got as successful as he has. So that guy is so engaged in everything he does. It was it was shocking getting to know him and kind of see how that whole that whole program runs last year. Because he was a, he literally retired basically because when he sold and that was me being sarcastic by the way so down, on, sold, his yeah, down <laughs> on his love <luck. laughs> <Sold, laughs> poor guy sold dc shoes <laughs> for like yeah. you know a few hundred million dollars give or take right and uh <clears throat> but still as a 40 something because he was 40 at the time wasn't mm-hmm. he it's yeah, he 40, was just ahead of the curb he he saw an opening of what the what the sport was going to and what it was going to take to actually fund a race program right and then they went and created a marketing a marketing company to to create the content and create the activations for the race sponsorship store got it. so they they went from they went to the to the end result that they had to get at and ma- made their way backwards interesting so, yeah hey let me, how let, do you know sorry do you know how he he made that decision though like here like was he just like this is a fucking cool sport i want to get into it and that's that was the driving factor in that or was it hey i see a hole in the market and i want to develop a product around it and i'm going to need to race what, or is it i don't want to speak too it? much for him but from from what i can remember of the story yeah it, we were drinking at the time too right so it uh 
he he loved rally. He's always been into rally, okay. uh, both rally cross and stage rally. Okay. Right. His his I think his passion is is genuinely stage rally, and he wanted to get into it, but he wanted to make a business out of it, right? Because it turns right. into an expensive hobby yeah, yeah. real quick. Right. And one of the things that he saw was that there there was such a void on the on the activation and just sticking stickers on a race car is one mm-hmm. thing, but actually putting that that partnership and that and that and that asset you have to work. Is a whole nother thing. Building so content around building content what you around have it. In your fingers. Right. Yeah, and being able to deliver that to an audience. So he went and built that audience and that content generating company, and and then moved back and kind of pulled that into a race program. Escape from L.A. Man, that's one of my favorite videos on YouTube. Literally, yep. I've seen it probably a hundred times. No, yep. I don't know. So, Gymkana. but on the race team side of it, to finish your question, you asked what the what the life is like. What my goal is is I want to build a, a, a list of partners that are partners of the race team, not necessarily mine, so we can go out to a kid that's working his ass off, right? Like right. there's so many kids out there that just deserve a shot, mm. and they just don't have the access to the funds to be able to get in the car. I don't want to hand anyone a ride. I don't want to hand anyone a gift, right? But I want to be able to give someone the opportunity to work their ass off and keep on working at that next level and go above and beyond for their partners like I do in, in everything that we do right. and and give them that shot that shot to have a career in motorsports. How do you find right how now, do you find a bunch like of rich a, kids? Yeah, how do you find a young kid out there? Is it is it like Days of Thunder where it's like there's a cold trickle out there just circling tracks? Do you have to go out See, and scout them? I think them? that I think that's how it needs to be. Like there's so many kids out there racing the local dirt tracks and the local oval tracks and everything and and the stage rally stuff. There's so many kids out there. I think like there, there's so much content you and I were talking about. There's, there's a story to be had behind finding that right kid. Well, I mean, you know, did you ever see the the thing they had a few years ago where the the top i racing kid? It was this Asian kid that didn't even have his license. They put him in a real yeah. Indy car, and he got within six seconds of the track record. <laughs> well, <laughs> William Byron, he, he took over Jeff Gordon's ride. He was an yeah. i racing kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. He was yep. an iRacing kid. Yeah. <laughs> so he went from racing on the internet to racing on Jeff Gordon's 24, the iconic Exalta car. That's epic. That's, that's crazy. He's doing all right, Ted. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> he sounds like right. it. No, hey, last year he actually placed fairly good, didn't he? Well, he sat on the, the pole. 500? He sat on the pole for the Daytona 500 last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the most lucrative racing sport out there? Is it NASCAR, I would imagine? Uh, in the United States, NASCAR for sure. Uh, mm. Worldwide, Formula One. Formula, Formula One. one. I, I think a budget for a single Formula One team for a season is about four hundred fifty million. Formula bucks. One makes oh, money. Oh, Wait, say that again. Four hundred and fifty million. Wow. I didn't it's hear the million. I thought you said thousand. <laughs> I was like, well, that's that's a real good limit. Four hundred and fifty million. Yeah. What, what does a driver get paid? Race. Yeah. What what is what does Hamilton get? That that guy Hamilton. Like he's oh, the most. I can't. He's the most famous, right? Yeah, I well, I think Alonzo is the most successful uh, financially over the course of his career. Uh, Hamilton will get there easily, 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 easily. But I I don't know what they're making. I don't even want to know. I know they're mm. flying around G6s and stuff, so it's got to be okay. Yeah, because the, the Andrettis <laughs> the Andrettis are everywhere, and they're they were one of the richest families of all time, and it was from Formula One. Uh, what the fuck do you think they're worth? It's got to be billions, right? Probably a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm, the, I can't even. I you know, even like imagine. I love rally because it's so much more interesting to watch. Yeah. I feel like, and you know, Formula One and NASCAR, and I, I mean, amazing sports. It's great, but I had this guy in airborne school that was so into NASCAR, and he listened to it on the fucking radio, and I was perplexed by it because he just like, oh man, <laughs> and he's like all amped up in the car. I'm like, you can't even fucking see anything, man. So yeah, well, the thing I like about rally, rally is whoever crosses the finish line is winning. Yeah. <laughs> And and they're not pitting or anything like that, so it's not like wait a minute, wait, you were well, just we, and we don't have pit whole... stops, right? So no. it's like the in the NASCAR stuff, like you'd go out there and it was a it was a challenge to keep yourself kind of calm and stuff because you got three hundred, four hundred, some the the cup race is five hundred miles, right? So it's like you got to get to the last fifty miles before you really get up on the wheel and and push this thing. So you got to save your car until then. So like you have a bad handling car, you make a, a setup mistake, if you want to call it that in one of the pit stops, it's oh just give me another eighty laps, hundred laps till you come in for the next time. We'll fix it. This rally stuff, it's like you are you're a six lap heat race eight lap final and it's like you you're sitting at the starting line it's just like a dirt bike start right like we're all lined up and it's a standing start and when the lights go green you've got five minutes for a qualifying race and you better have your ass up on the wheel there is no if you if you sit back and just kind of coast for a lap you're done you're absolutely done so this stuff is like the the most exhilarating part of this like when you're sitting on the line your heart is just pounding 
Right, like it's, it is. I felt that last night during the. Uh, oh, were you getting a little bit? Cart. I was trying to reach over and flip the reserve, the reverse <laughs> button. button on your cart. That would have been the best. Just right up the start. Yeah. Boom, backwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. When we took off, I tried to run into you guys and give Evan a little better start. That was our game plan. Yeah. Hey, you, you you capitalized on it. I did. Well, Mainly I, your driving. It was good. I don't know if it was my driving. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can blame it on that. We had Needless this. to say, it's going to make for a really good video. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was a good was, charity there, challenge. There was all the races were exciting. They were not. They, they were, were not, back and forth and everything. Yeah, they were close. They were all like, like really. <laughs> Paul and, um, and yeah, Garrett. and Garrett. That oh, was, that was a good that race. Evan, awesome. you and I had a good race too on the on the first one. That was yeah, fun. That was a fun race. Uh, yeah. I will say it was shocking to know that the first race, Matt, you struggled. Right. right? The, but you ended up winning the last run. Well, I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> well, the funny thing was with that, and I'm going to throw this at Paul's face, is I was asking all these questions because I was genuinely interested on – because I've done defensive driving, but how do you get these? And you were giving me some great you know, education on how to take turns and where to break and accelerate out. I'm like, okay. And Paul's like, oh, whatever. He won't fucking win the race anyways. <laughs> and I'm like – all right, bitch. All right. Challenge yeah, accepted. Well, yeah, yeah, because I was on I was on Garrett's ass that last race the whole time and I was I was just waiting to get around him and then Paul came up and I let Paul go thinking go ahead of me thinking that he would take Garrett and then he fucking gapped him. Put fucking a quarter of a lap in front of him behind him. Like, all right, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should do this, this in the rally car next. Yeah. yeah. Come we on. We need to go to a rally school, you know, and then you you be our host. I think we need to take a real rally cross car to a rally school, though. Yeah. Like one with yeah. anti-leg, one with yeah, a like bunch not of gearbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not yours. Not, I'm, I'm not taking mine to a We're not going on the <laughs> gravel with my beautiful rally car. Uh, <laughs> Why did you we buy are, it? We are definitely going on gravel We're at some point going this on summer. The gravel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your, your that like will a, not be a beautiful I, car by the time we're done with it. I will say I, I went to O'Neill's a few years ago. And uh, we got in, you know, we were doing the whole course where you start with just regular cars. I got roll cages yep. and whatnot. And you're building up. And uh, I got into, you get to get into a real rally car, right? With a real rally racer. And who is the dude? Who's Forrest's brother? Uh, Duplis. Yeah. Who's Forrest's I forget brother? his so, first name. Yeah. But I get in the car and it's legit rally car. I'm like, okay, whatever. It can't be that much different. I was fucking so scared. Like, <laughs> you're in the passenger seat and you're going into a, a literally like a, a right hand fucking like hairpin. 90 degree yeah. hairpin corner. And, and there's a wall of trees and you're like, there's no fucking way we're going to make this corner. There's no fucking way. And you're going a hundred miles an hour into this fucking thing. And he's talking to me. That was the thing that was <laughs> fucking me up. Cause he was like, talking to me he turned his head over and he's like yeah so you just like get your and he's like driving with like like he's out on a sunday drive yeah. just ripping cruising through. up like, the hey, 101 man. in a palm hey, trees i'm, I'm, I'm white knuckling you... going hey man just, just watch the road dude just, just yeah, watch but the road. if you're riding with someone that's a race car driver and they're white knuckling it that's when you need to be scared no <laughs> He all, was all not would, scared. All I would be thinking during that would be like, it's been a long day. <laughs> oh. Seriously. Oh, like, oh, dude, don't fuck this I up. Just, I kept on thinking about all the shit that I've done in my life that has been reasonably dangerous and very dangerous compared to 99.9% .9 of everybody else in the world. I'm like, this is where it ends. This is where it ends for me. It's right, just like right. a dude talking to me in a passenger seat, and I'm just going to fucking wrap myself around one of these trees. This is it. This is how I go out. Well, that's the crazy part of that. It's, it's like such a consistent calculated risk where – minor fuck ups are have massive consequence because it's like right. you roll that thing at 120 on a corner Ooh. by felicia like the, what i mean i can't imagine most people i know there's some Pastrana good safety measures record, but right? <laughs> seven and a half I rolls think and has every record when it comes to real. wrecking stuff <laughs> travis is just a crazy person I, I'm oh, not like, 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 the motocross, been. like those the, stage those stage rally fucking, guys though yeah. i will those stage rally guys are nuts like yeah, i would much rather run cliffs, into a concrete wall cliffs. like I, i'll hit a concrete wall all day long and just stop Right, right. But they hit trees. They yeah. they roll over cliffs, and, and that. Well, that was what Jim Con ten when that that tire was half off that cliff. It's like he would have died if that went off. Yeah. And it was just like, hey, let's play with three inches of life. Like that. That's <laughs> that yeah. was legit. The motocross right guys are the same way when they're doing like triple backflips. You want to know shit, what the worst like part about a motocross guy is? 
put them in a rally car and they all of a sudden have a seatbelt seat belt on and a cage around them. <laughs> oh, I'm super and, safe, bro. I'm <laughs> Superman. I can just do anything now. Yeah, the scaredest yeah. I've ever been is in a racer with Pastrana. Yeah. yeah. Like, it is terrifying. Because yeah. they feel because they're invincible like, no. at that point. Wait, yeah. this, is, yeah. this is against everything that I think is normal. I know it's terrifying, plus I've seen all the videos where he's wrecked. That's one of the reasons why I've <laughs> never you? been out there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, fuck that. He's like, I got, I got that. you, dude. Brr, yeah. Brr. You're like... <laughs> Like you're hanging on the back. He'll be like, "Oh, just hang on. It's not a big deal. We're gonna go over this jump." What? And this <laughs> what is are you talking and this about? is someone that has and in, in paralyzed one of his best friends. So, <laughs> like, my lord, that's just it's a scary business over there. Yeah, it's a scary, it's scary stuff. Pastrana Land is not a place where I'm gonna be for, for the going faint-hearted and just being like, "Yeah, I'm just chilling." You out. have to go. No, I, I'm, I'm actually not. I'm not <laughs> going to. I'm not going. You We're need talking to experience this. We're I'll jump talking out of a plane about a... any day of the week. I'm not getting in a fucking razor with Travis Pastrana. We're talking <laughs> about a sponsorship happen. deal with Travis happen. last year, and he calls me up. He's like, hey, man, I think you need to make this call for us because that guy came. I'm not going to say who it was, but he was, that guy came out to the to Pastrana line one day, and within about 30 minutes, I had him on my bike with me, and I didn't tell him, but we did a backflip. <laughs> he got scared halfway through and jumped off, and I landed on him and broke his arm. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's like, but I, I had him at my best surgeon within 10 minutes, so I don't know why he was still pissed off at me. <laughs> <laughs> I had my best surgeon on call. The my point validated exactly right there. That's like my point validated. That's like giving someone's AIDS and then giving someone AIDS, and you're like, no worries, dude. I got Magic Johnson's doctor to take, take care of you. You're not mad at me, right, bro? You're like, no, I have AIDS, asshole. You broke my fucking arm. <laughs> Obviously, different things. Ah, but a little they, different, yeah. you know. You just can't. Ah, no, no, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You're shorter. Yeah, yeah. He's a lot taller happen. than you. <laughs> not gonna happen. After, you're, after watching Tommy Boy, like, hey, you could do that, man. Hey. Jump off that fucking street bike. Oh. It's no big deal. You'll be fine. Morgan Luttrell took the ride, and he loved it. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Like that's, <laughs> you got to take I don't, the ride. I don't like giving other people just, here you go. Hey, take just, my life. Just, have fun with it. Ha- have that. Have that. I'm just going to give that to you. You're Especially gonna... a guy like Travis, which I, I truly do like, and, and I he's very much admire. Dude. admire. Yeah. He's awesome. However, I know he's a dangerous friend. He's a dangerous friend. Like he likes, da- still he likes dangerous fun, Barely. and he's a dangerous friend. <laughs> Those are the dudes that you're like. I know when you're going to be dangerous. I'm not going to be around you when you're being dangerous. That's just the way it is. <laughs> like if you got the guy that's like, no man, it's cool. It's rush roulette. Just play. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm, I'm good, bro. Yeah. I'm good. I'm going to sit this one out. I'll he just is, watch he you is guys. By far the most responsible one of you three. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is e- easy to see. That there's he is just a-, a few things where he's more responsible. There's some, there's some that he gets loose on. Some. Some <laughs> very we're loose. gonna have to experience this one of these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Uh, Give me a couple shots of whiskey and I'll do whatever. I'll go fuck. Yeah, <laughs> he's going for the ride. Uh, uh, sure. Steve, now's the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is somebody that inspired you or somebody that helped you in your career moving forward to this day. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? You know, as as cliche as this sounds, I got to give that one to my dad. He's uh, he's been that guy my whole life, my go to guy for for everything. My biggest fan, my sports system, the guy that'll kick me in the ass when I need it. So he's uh, he's definitely my motivation too. He's a he's a good dude. Boom! Cheers! Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> well, where can people check out you know your racing team, maybe your your Instagram, and if people want to follow you and check out all the crazy stuff you do with Rally and all the other um, absolutely, sports. we got a big year coming up this year with everything we're doing. We're racing the ARX Series, America's Rally Cross, as well as uh, Nitro World Games, and race for Lone Bro Motorsports, just at Lone Bro Motorsports, and uh, my Instagram is at Arpen Double Zero. At uh, Arpen Double Zero. Jared, is he coming on the cruise with us? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he didn't know until right then. But welcome, welcome. <laughs> We're going on the cruise. Maybe you can drive welcome. the boat. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can drive the boat. Yeah, maybe I you will can drift get up the there. boat. Yeah, we'll drift. That, I want to dock the boat. Yeah, you like docking? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew there was a docking we'll joke. We'll get in a there. couple shots of whiskey in this before we go down that path, friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's as Canadian. Long as a little booze. He's in Canadian. Him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just yeah, give me some okay. maple syrup and we'll dock our dicks all day long. I like to roll the pretzel. I like to twist them together. Hey, quick, yeah. put this hockey stick in my butthole. <laughs> no, Sorry. but I want you to get there the full go. stick up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, if you want the full stick up there, go to drinkingbros.com and sign up for the cruise today. Yeah. Someone will put it inside of you. Uh, <laughs> Steve, it was a pleasure having you on, on the show. You're an inspirational dude, man. 
I appreciate you guys. Thanks for yeah, having yeah, me. Thanks, we'll see a lot you. more of you this keep, year for keep sure. Keep ass. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers for Steve, Jared Taylor, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway. Evan. Evan went on a beautiful rant today. And Matt Best and his new Raptor. I'm Ross Patterson. Good night, everybody.